Gunta, der in general Gunta, das must be sa. Something like that in German. What's poppin' everybody? It's your boy Punkick POV back at it again, son, and WrestleMania Night 2, boy. I have to say that this was, uh, it didn't deliver as good as Night 1. Man, Night 1 was one of the best, one of the most, one of the best produced shows ever in the WWE, and that made this WrestleMania 39 arguably if not the best wrestlemania of all time uh, however the night two i have so much of mixed feelings about the night two this was so much fun as well i'm not i'm not sitting here to nitpick on everything that they produced uh in the night two however when are you supposed to lose your titles huh when universal wwe title you you have it you know you got them hostage when are you supposed to lose them? Not even Cody Rhodes. Who is it? Please tell us. So, uh, man, I'm so pissed with this decision that they still have Roman Reigns as the, uh, you know, undisputed WWE Universal Champion. Cody Rhodes couldn't do the job as well, and maybe they uh, they're they're planning to go. Uh, with the SummerSlam program, you know, Cody Rhodes will, uh, you know, that's what I feel. He still has to finish the story and he will finish the story. Roman Reigns, uh, he will lose to Cody Rhodes itself. That's what I feel. And uh, I think they, they, they are going to have uh, Roman complete his thousand day reign uh, as Universal Champion, right? Uh, so uh, yeah they it's it's the company's top guy man it's it's this is their favorite guy and the obsession of uh, you know that they have with Roman that's that's so clear that's been so obvious whether it was Vince in power or it's you know Triple H in power they these things don't change uh they they are so much obsessed with roman reigns uh they like him a little too much and that's the way they keep on booking this guy so for just just for him to reach and complete his thousand day reign uh they screwed cody's moment man i'm i'm so pissed right now uh with triple h I, I i wish i could pedigree him in front of stephanie mcmahon right now but they just went with the decision we we can't do anything about that roman reigns has retained both of his titles and what i was saying is even if they're going with the SummerSlam action the SummerSlam program that uh reigns this thousand day reign will be completed as well the bloodline story will uh you know reach its end in the meantime as well reaching SummerSlam and Cody will be given the opportunity there to have his moment there to finish the story there to put this guy down but the problem with that and I've said this before the problem with uh having Cody have his moment at SummerSlam is that maybe the fans would not buy into Cody Rhodes as much as they did uh you know uh during this time and wrestlemania man this was wrestlemania one of the best wrestlemanias of all time that you guys produced and this should have been cody rhodes's moment but y'all didn't do it but anyways man night two uh without a doubt i will say the intercontinental championship match this was this was the best thing about night two easily this was the best thing no other match no other moment comes comes close to uh the gunther sheamus and drew mcintyre uh match what a moment what a time to be a wrestling fan seriously that was that was something special uh, so we'll talk about all of these uh, things and all of these matches that we had at night two, uh, starting with Brock Lesnar versus Omos, and like I predicted, Lesnar had to take 
a W. Just like Seth Rollins did last night at night one, Lesnar had to take a win because he was taking too many L's. This was a great match. Like, I don't think you can expect more from Brock Lesnar and Omos match. Omos, you know, in the beginning stages of this match, he, he did have doing that bear hug uh, to Brock Lesnar, you know, that Omos had Lesnar for like, I think, two times in that bear hug. And Omos also hit the choke slam on Brock Lesnar, I, I remember that. So Omos was, you know, he was casting his power and he was, you know, you can say uh, bullying Brock Lesnar even. Uh, in the beginning stages of this uh, of this match with his size obviously comparatively bigger a lot bigger than the beast but man uh, the beast uh, suddenly he started taking Omos to the suplex city he started giving those suplexes German suplexes to Omos and we did see Lesnar trying to you know he was feeling a bit of pain in the back and his in his back uh, but still Lesnar took him to Suplex City he gave him uh, that that taste of uh, you know three or four German suplexes and I, I think he tried for the for the first time he uh, you know he tried to F5 Omos but the but his back gave out suddenly man uh, right after that uh, Lesnar uh, you know, with not much time after that first attempt, he did uh, succeed into uh, dropping Omos down in that ring with an F5. I did not expect that I would see Lesnar, you know, he, uh, you know, he would F5 Omos, but he did. He is uh, the beast incarnate, bro, and we know that Brock Lesnar is like he just mauls man he puts people down and gives them a prison beating so brock lesnar in his second second attempt he drops omos down he puts it puts the giant down and he picks up the win brock lesnar deserves uh sorry brock lesnar beats uh omos and yeah he deserves to beat omos at this stage of his you know career because he was taking too many l's uh as of uh, you know as of late the next matchup was the women's showcase match and this was nowhere near to the men's showcase match nowhere near and i i don't even remember what went down in this match seriously to be serious with you guys uh it's not about we didn't have any interest towards uh these tag teams and you know still they they didn't have any you know memorable spots which i can remember from this match but still this was a big moment for raquel rodriguez shout out to raquel uh this was her first wrestlemania yes and i i can feel uh, how happy she must be feeling uh to be a part of uh her first wrestlemania this this must have been one of her biggest moments of her life i know damn sure about that so the only memorable memorable spot which i remember was the triple power bomb from uh i guess uh it was natalia and raquel and liv morgan i'm not i i don't remember but there was a triple power bomb with natalia in i remember that also uh yeah natalia did do uh her sharpshooter on i think sonia deville and chelsea green yes she kind of did she kind of did the uh, double sharpshooter on chelsea and sonia deville and yeah Liv morgan she man she hit i feel a lot of code breakers i was hearing michael cole or corey graves somebody on commentary called that out so morgan was uh given those code breakers here and there but you know how the match ended shotzi blackheart i'm sorry i i always <laughs> i will address shotzi as shotzi blackheart only man i i can't help it so uh uh the match ended with uh with shotzi getting caught in the submission move of ronda rousey and uh you know uh i feel that's the arm bar right so Shotzi uh, got caught 
uh, in the uh, submission of Ronda Rousey and she tapped Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler are your uh, you know they win this showcase match and that was my prediction good decision from the WWE in the second match as well because we only care about their feud give us their feud it's personal that could steal any show any day Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler bro that itself can explain what these two women can do to each other the next matchup was the Intercontinental Championship match, man. The Ring General Gunther, Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. The most physical match that I have ever seen, being a fan of wrestling. Man, the spots that we got, man, my, my head was spinning watching, uh, you know, how close Sheamus, McIntyre, they came to winning uh, the Intercontinental Championship from Gunther man and they were they kept kicking out at 2.99999 Sheamus uh, he connected a lot of broke kicks uh, you know even from out of nowhere McIntyre hits the Claymore Sheamus is doing his, his broke kicks Gunther is doing you know he power bombed Sheamus on McIntyre again and then Gunther come on Sheamus come on Sheamus come on you know man Gunther then hits him with the lariat and the sound of the lariat as well. How this match ended was Gunther, he hits the power bomb on Drew McIntyre, I feel. And y'all know I'm in love with Gunther's power bomb. He has the most beautiful form of the power bomb for me. So yeah, the ring and it all, Gunther, he pins. I think Ma McIntyre, yeah, the, uh, with the power bomb and the ring and it all retains his his intercontinental championship also uh, shout out to ludwig kaiser and giovanni vinci man and ludwig kaiser man ludwig kaiser is so good and he makes this whole ring general thing you know he is responsible for that he makes this whole thing what it is the next matchup was for the raw women's championship as asuka take uh, takes on bianca belair and man, I wanted Asuka to win this match, man. I don't know why they went with Bianca Belair to retain her championship. I do know that maybe we could give give this a little a little bit of time. But still, man, Asuka was doing such a good job, uh, you know, going back to uh, kind of her old character and you know the character change uh in asuka and how sadistic and uh you know brutal she 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 was uh being uh recently and there was this man her new theme song that slaps that theme song is has easily grown on me so this character of asuka uh, the way she she's feeling it, the way she she's into that character, man. I wanted Oscar to win. That should have been the payoff. That, but still, man, uh, they went with Bianca Belair. I got no problem uh, if you know seeing Bianca retain. I love her. Uh, this match was, I feel, Oscar was held back by the creative team. I I, I feel so. But still, these two women, they, they just went out there and they smashed this, like, they smashed each other in that ring. Uh, Asuka with her lethal strikes, uh, those were some really good spots. And yeah, uh, there was this one point where, where Asuka went for the miss, but Bianca, she dugged, uh, you know, she dugged uh, Asuka's mist. And Asuka, she, she did catch bianca in her you know asuka lock but bianca i feel she was kicking out or she she just wasn't tapping out she wasn't tapping uh you know she wasn't ready to quit she wasn't uh going down uh you know against asuka and she was ready for any amount of pain that asuka would cast on her so massive respect to bianca belair as always man she is a freak of nature she is what a woman what a woman bianca and i felt like bianca was going to tap this time but bianca she uh, she picked oscar up yeah man she picked her up 
on her, on her shoulders, you know, following that Asuka lock, she just picks Asuka on her shoulders and she drops her with the KOD. Bianca Belair, what a performance, uh, defeats Asuka and retains her Raw Women's Championship. And then, you know, we, we, again, we again got The Miz for some reason, man. <laughs> the Miz be having his thing, man. Two matches uh, at this WrestleMania, Hollywood. So this one was a filler one, you know, a, uh, that fun kind of thing. Just like last night with Pat McAfee, Shane O'Mac returned. And um, I'm one of y'all know I love Shano, man. I, I'm I'm one of his biggest fans. I, I appreciate the man so much, and he he is one of my favorite guys in this in this entire industry. I love Shane Shano. So Shano returned, but he sadly tore his quads, and I feel they had to uh, pull an audible. And Snoopy Snoop D O Double G had his moment, man. He did uh, the whole rock thing, and he. Um, entertained the audience, you know, uh, did the uh, people's elbow and all of that crap and Snoop Dogg uh, defeated, uh, you know, he defeats The Miz and takes, you know, pins The Miz. The next big match up was the Rated R Superstar Edge taking on the Demon Finn Balor inside that Hell in a Cell and massive respect, massive love, massive respect to Finn Balor, man. Finn Balor has received a dangerous injury to his skull you know it's opened up you know it's a big big you know opening in his skull man all the love and respect to Finn Balor one of the best talents that that this company has ever had and one thing before I begin talking about the match I I feel Edge was acting as a heel you know I, I don't know why but when he got in the cage and he gets in the ring i don't know for me edge was acting like uh he he he, he was back in the day man uh so that's what that's something which i felt easily one of the best matches they could have added more to the match but obviously finn receives an injury man uh, such a brutal injury to his skull as edge threw a ladder uh, towards Finn Balor, he threw that ladder and it just made a nasty contact with Finn Balor and just opened his skull, uh, opened him up. And the medical team, you know, the medical professionals were out there as well. Man, massive props to Finn Balor. He was opened up, he was bleeding, he still continued the match. These two guys, they, they made this Hell in a Cell be a TLC match, man. Those kendo sticks, uh, having Balor trapped with two kendo sticks, one, you know, uh, right off, uh, off of his neck, uh, you know, put through uh, the cage uh, so that he couldn't move, and then he just breaks through those kendo sticks. There were uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of those chair shots tables were being used finn balor man that if that would have connected finn balor gets on you know he just gets to the cage uh, and i was like where the where is finn going and he gets to a good height on the cage and he he had edge on the table and he jumps off of that cage onto that table to hit edge with a coup de gras from the cage and man that would have done it if that coup de gras was if that coup de gras would have connected edge had no chance but edge he gets out of there and finn just makes a straight contact with the table instead and we also saw yeah there was this one spot as well where edge hit the spear but finn balor kicked out after receiving all of that pain and edge was like man how how did finn kick out like what what's going on and in the end man i feel edge speared balor but uh he finished the match with a concerto uh and i loved how they had these steel chairs in red color so edge he does the concerto on finn balor 
and uh, Edge defeats Finn Balor and I, I was saying to myself the entire time that Edge shouldn't have won this match man, Edge didn't need a win, Finn Balor deserves a win and how how we all felt that finally a Finn Balor push was on the way, finally this man was getting the push that he's deserved for years as of now out here on the main roster and how much this man has grown in the judgment day and gotten over with the fans as well we we saw the potential finally we saw wwe finally trusting you know finn balor that he he could be their uh top star but still man they gave him the l i don't know why uh, Edge didn't need the win to be honest with you guys on top of this man it's his uh, demon character bro like y'all can't sleep on demon Finn Balor that like WWE should have thought about this this was his uh, demon persona I don't know why they gave Edge the win but still man uh, that's what uh what happened and we'll see how this, this story moves forward is edge done with with jd or he's not done with the jd members still uh do finn and edge have another match uh on the way uh we'll see how things go from here between edge and the members of jd the judgment day and the main event of night two uh, as the american nightmare cody rhodes took on roman reigns for the undisputed wwe universal championship and roman made his entrance out there with solo sokoa by his side and i i immediately i immediately felt that solo was going to to play a huge part tonight on roman retaining those titles and Heyman was uh, was uh, was out there as well with solo cody he did his you know uh, trademark cody cutter i think he did that twice or when he went man that spot was beautiful when cody rhodes was going for the cody cutter roman reigns catches him with a superman punch uh, that was a that was one of the one of the best <laughs> uh if not the best spot in this entire match for me and that's the only thing that I liked about this match. As Cody tries to pick momentum off the ropes, uh, Roman Reigns hits a beautiful spear, but Cody Rhodes kicked out. Also, man, a defining moment in the match when Roman had Cody in the guillotine, but, Ro but Cody, he broke through that guillotine, man. Cody was given everything he, he had. And this man just easily did one of the best, one of the most beautiful super kicks that I've seen. Cody connects a super kick and uh, follows that with a crossroads, but Roman Reigns kicks out. Also, yeah, Cody Rhodes hit the pedigree as well on, uh, you know, uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, but uh, Reigns manages to kick out. Solo pulled a lot of shenanigans uh, by himself out there. He even attacks Cody behind from uh, you know that belt which Cody brings to the ring every time when he makes his entrance. So Cody uh, Solo attacks Cody Rhodes outside the ring. He hits him with uh, with his belt. The referee ejected Solo off of the ringside. Uh, and Solo was pissed, but yeah, so we felt that Solo was done from the night uh, and he wasn't uh, coming back in this match at least, but he was. Yeah, moving on, man, there was this one spot where uh, Roman and Cody, they both take each other down and the referee was knocked out as well. The referee was out. These two guys, they clothesline each other and both the referee ain't there and out come the Usos and they start attacking Cody Rhodes. Uh, but Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, uh, they came out there to uh, take down the Usos and they took the Usos out of there, uh, gave them the beating and they also attacked the tribal chief himself. They 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 uh you know laid out roman reigns flat in that ring solo sorry uh sammy with the halua kick kevin owen stunts 
uh, Roman with the stunner. So uh, yeah, Kevin Owens and Sammy, they did their job. In the final moments of this match, Cody Rhodes, man, uh, living that spirit of his father inside. Cody Rhodes connects with the crossroads and then he hits a second crossroads and I was like, man, Cody's finally going to do it. Cody's finally going to have his moment. He's going to put down Roman Reigns and he was going for the third uh, uh, crossroads and obviously that was going to do it. But Sikoa appears again, Solo Sikoa appears again. Uh, you know, uh, this time with a hoodie uh, on and Solo Sikoa, he did his thing. I feel he connected the Samoan spike and that allows Roman Reigns to hit the spear on Cody Rhodes and that was the match winning spear. Roman Reigns retains his undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Cody Rhodes was not uh, able to uh, finish the story as if now because I as much as uh, I was pissed with the decision and watching Roman retain those titles yet again I feel Cody Rhodes is getting a rematch and this isn't over yet this isn't done here we're not done with this I feel Cody Rhodes is still the guy who will put down Roman Reigns who will overcome Roman Reigns and he will be he has to be man he has to be he is the biggest star in this industry now he is and yeah uh, i feel cody rhodes is getting a rematch and this would involve how they uh take the, the entire bloodline story how that reaches uh to its end i feel they're 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 going to uh keep both of these things play out really well and uh, Reigns will be by himself and Cody will have his moment then around SummerSlam maybe uh, we'll see about that also uh, one thing I did feel Solo Sikoa's intentions aren't true towards Roman Reigns man like this man was solely yes yeah, Solo was solely responsible tonight out there for Roman retaining his titles against Cody and the way Solo was you know uh, holding Roman Reigns as Roman wasn't able to stand up after the match uh, given a shoulder uh, for Reigns to lean on uh, man I feel Solo has something you know like uh, like he he's planning something against Roman Reigns I I don't know I feel Solo's intentions are something else towards Roman Reigns. We'll see how this entire bloodline story uh, unfolds, but this is it. Roman retained again. Hope y'all enjoyed uh, uh, the review, uh, this video, man, of night two. This WrestleMania was stacked. ASF, this WrestleMania was stacked, like I told you guys. As stacked as Rhea Ripley is every day of her life. Yes, I repeated my sentence for three times uh, this entire time that we've talked about WrestleMania 39. What a WrestleMania this was. Easily the greatest WrestleMania of all time for me. Hope you all had fun in this video. Uh, let me know down in the comments your favorite moments from this night one and night two of WrestleMania, Hollywood WrestleMania 39. Hope y'all had fun. Share this video to your friend, your mama, your girlfriend, whoever you feel like. Road to 300 subscribers, man. Help me reach there as fast as possible. Come join the team. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. I'll catch y'all in the next one. It's your boy Pancake POV signing off. Bye.